The hunt for the next professional MasterChef champion continues. And these six chefs all believe they have what it takes to win the title. Now, they face two challenges set by Judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin star Marcus Waring. I fear that the, the other chefs might be maybe a bit more skillful, but I just hope I can keep up. <laughs> I just want to get in and get in there and do it. You know, I just, why wait? Let's get it done. Brand new set of contestants who are going to be walking into this kitchen, and we need to find one shining star. Our chefs have got to be at the top of their game. They need to be focused. They need to want this more than anything. Right, we've got six chefs coming in here today. We're going to kick them off with a skills test. Yep. There's a lot of stuff on this bench, Marcus. What are you going to get them to do? I would like the, the cooks to make a lobster salmon ravioli served with a lobster sauce. How long is that going to take? 20 minutes. No way. The pasta's already made, so really it's about the sauce, the filling of the, of the ravioli, and then the making of it. Three steps. Our chefs need to judge everything from the thickness to that pasta to how to get the, the best flavour out of this lobster shell as possible. So the first thing we want to do is, is to get the sauce going. What I don't want to see is them um, smashing the tail itself to pieces. Put some butter into our pan. I'm going to chop up a shallot. Every chef should know how to do lobster. I mean, it's on every quality menu, isn't it, a lobster? Yeah. In one way or another. It's such a beautiful, sweet meat. Head of garlic to there. One fresh bay leaf. The sprigs of thyme. Seasoning. That's underway. That's taken about a minute to get that on. Now what we're going to do is start to make the filling of the, of the ravioli. Half of the salmon fillet we're going to quickly dice up. So I'm just dicing up the lobster. We're going to blitz this bit of salmon because this is what's going to bind those ingredients together. OK? Splash of cream. Why don't you just put all the lobster and salmon and cream in together and blitz? Because to put a lobster into, uh, into a blender with the salmon and blitz it up... You want the texture and to taste the lobster. Mm. And I'm just going to add some chopped chervil. This is beautifully caramelising now. We'll take some sherry. Put a splash of fish stock. Put a splash of cream. Take the ravioli, just very gently, just roll them. We're going to pop these into the fridge. And that will, what, firm them up a little just bit? Just a little bit, yep. They've got to be all round us, and making pasta is just going to be one of the little tricks that they should have up their sleeve. OK, so pasta done. Take the sauce off the stove, and we just leave it draining through. Now we're ready to make our ravioli. So. Egg yolk around the outside. What we're looking for is that ravioli that sort of sits like a little flying saucer. Look. We need your water. Cooks for four minutes. That's just been dripping through. OK, so we've had four minutes on the ravioli now. Chopped chervil. Oh, mate. Got a bit of olive oil. And there we have it. A lobster salmon ravioli served with a lobster sauce finished with a touch of chervil. That simple. 20 minutes. Our chefs have got to move it. They've really got to move quick on this one.
It's decadent. It's you know, it's a it's a dish that makes you feel spoiled. I love love that dish. I'll be very very impressed if our chefs can make a dish of that caliber. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. Let's give it a go. First up is Joey, who has travelled the world as a private chef. I love working with my hands. Um, I think there's huge satisfaction in, in working with your hands and actually physically creating something. Subsequently, my hands are now completely ruined. And I love pe the concept of people coming together over food. I find it so satisfying, kind of feeding people and bringing people together. Hello, Josephine. <laughs> Hello. What do you like to be called? Josephine, Joe, or...? Uh, Joey. Joey? Yeah. OK, Joey. I would like you to make us a lobster salmon ravioli. OK. OK, and serve that with a lobster sauce. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20. Oh, God. <laughs> Off you go. Where did you train? Um, I went to a cooking school in Ireland after school. Um, and then I did a coming out skate here in London. Halfway. Ten minutes left. We want one, yeah? Just one. Yep. Four minutes left. You all done? Yes, I'm done. Thank you. I, I really commend you for your working methods. I thought you approached it incredibly professionally. Uh, your, your chopping, your cutting, your organisation was very good. Uh, and you did everything in the right order. You did a very good job. Thank you. Well done. You work like a real chef. That's what I want to see from you. I think you're on to a good journey. Thank you. All right. Full of flavour, nicely seasoned, lots of saffron. Really good. Thank you really, so much. really good, Joey. Thank you. Under these circumstances, your first dish in this kitchen, great job. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you cook your own dish. Off you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Get in. Back of the net. It was really enjoyable. I, yeah, I definitely feel kind of on a high and I want to keep going. Next is 21-year-old Sean, who has been head chef of a gastro pub for just over a year. My favourite thing about being a chef is being able to be creative. I'm, I'm no good at art writing on paper and stuff, but when it comes to food, I, that's my form of creativity and art, and that's how I like to just showcase my knowledge. 
I have an attention to detail that not many other chefs do have, and I think that's what's going to set me apart. Sean. I would like you to make us one large lobster salmon ravioli and serve it with a lobster sauce. You've done pasta work before? Yeah. Yeah? Made raviolis before? Yeah. And you've made sauce before? Yeah. Good. Sounds straightforward enough for you? Yeah. OK. Great cooking spot where you want to see, great skills at hand. Sean, you've got 20 minutes. Off you go. How old are you, Sean? Uh, 21. How old were you when you were a first aid chef, Marcus? Uh, 25. 25? Long time ago. That's young, isn't it? 21 age chef. Yeah. You must be talented. I do try my best. Have you cooked with lobster plenty of times? Um, not loads. Uh, I've cooked it a few times, but not too much. Sean, can I, can, I, can I just stop you just one second? Can I just ask you, just before you carry on, just to remove this from the board? Yeah. OK. The, the, you can't leave those on the board and work. Right, so your pasta's rolled. Yeah, lobster pasta's is rolled. in. In the pan to make your sauce, and that's your mix there, yeah? Yeah. You've got spoons here. Cheers. Sean, you're halfway. Ten minutes left. What's the matter, Sean? Uh, the pasta's stuck to the table. Should I use flour? Sean, you've now got five minutes to go. We need that ravioli in the pan. We need the sauce made. Yeah. Three minutes left. It was the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done in my life, without doubt. Your pasta was stuck to the table. You did it again, which was good. It's not as thin as the first time round, but it's not stuck together. Why do you use water when you had an egg there? Um, I've always just used water. I've found that it normally sticks it better, but... But it doesn't. It hasn't. And I think that's quite clear to see. Your whole process with the sauce, uh, not cutting the heads down, um, leaving the, the guts of the, of the head uh, on, on, on the board and working around it. You can't work like that, Sean. Yeah. It's just not what you should be doing as a head chef. No. You're cooking a piece of ravioli in, the, in water that's just not even simmering. Mm. It's, it's still raw. I really don't want to taste the fish in the middle in case it isn't cooked at all. And the sauce is just butter. You know, we understand nerves and no one's going home at this stage. But I really think you need to dust yourself down, start again. Off you go. Cheers. I'm hoping there's a confidence there that you can pull it back. I'll give it my 100% in the next round. Um, obviously, I need to, otherwise it's over for me, but...
The last chef to take on Marcus's skills test is 22-year-old Joe, who works as a private chef. The food that I cook is pretty much always fine dining. I always want to push it up to a higher standard. You know, I, I don't want to cook pub food. When I go to work for a private client, they want the best. And that's what I aim to give them, always. Right, Joe. Yep. One lobster salmon ravioli with a lobster sauce, 20 minutes. Off you go. OK. Tell me what it is you've got in mind there with, with that lobster head. I want to cook the lobster head so I can get the flavour out of the head so I can put it into the beast. Righto. Joe, you're halfway. You have ten minutes left. Thank you. Three chefs. Too full, I think. Chefs. There are some interesting methods in your to your work that I have to question, such as forcing a whole ball of pasta through the through the machine. You don't do that. Blanching the lobster head before you make it into a sauce. Uh, normally, you'd cut a lobster head down raw and put it into the sauce so that the flavour goes in the sauce and not into, not the, into the pan. Pot. Yeah. The other thing that was quite interesting that I've never seen uh, in a kitchen ever is the intestines of a lobster in a sauce before. Those are the last things you want from any animal in any dish, in any sauce. You have given us a dish, but it's, it's the, the, your, your methods and how you got here which concerns me. The water's got in there. Sauce is slightly bitter. Hasn't got a great deal of depth, but the biggest problem is that your ravioli has got a hole in it, the water's flooded in, and the whole thing is now waterlogged. It's what it's washed the flavour away. You do have some work uh, to do in the next round. I understand that. All right, Joe. Thank you. It's just so silly. I mean, I've done that a million times over, and I can make ravioli and I can make a lobster bisque. It's Silly mistakes.
We've seen three of the chefs already perform your skills yeah. test, Marcus. This is the skills test from you, Monica. What are you going to get them to do? I would like our chefs to bone out the pig's trotter and to stuff it with the chicken mousse ready for cooking. There's not a lot on the bench, but that's a very, very difficult thing to do. How long are you going to give them to, to do this? 15 minutes. Show, show us how you do a pig's trotter in 15 minutes. All right. First, I'm going to completely remove the hair. Just singe it off. To start with the butchery, just make an incision all the way down to open it up. I'm following the bone with the knife, trying not to cut through the skin. Because if you're going to stuff it, it will leak everywhere. All you want to leave on this are the little knuckles. You want it to have as much as possible that you can eat. You can see we've hit the first knuckle. We want to go over that. It's pretty straightforward. If they can stay calm and sort of look at it, it will come off. As long as they don't lose a finger, they should be all right. When did you, when did you first bone a pig's trot? I was actually in the industry. So I was at uh, the Tante Claire, Piet Kaufman's, the man that invented this dish. But this isn't something that a trainee chef would do, is it? No, but I think a training chef is taught how to bone out a chicken thigh, bone out a leg of lamb, and this is, is another way of boning. Now you can see starting to reveal where the joint is there on the, on the second little knuckles, OK? And you want to just get in there. OK, and separate Three. it at the joint. What you should have is that. It's just the ends left on it. It's, it's all hollow, ready to be stuffed. That's not easy. That's really hard. So I'm going to make up a quick chicken mousse to stuff it with. Here we just have some chicken that's been blitzed up. I'm going to use some cream. Of course, you should season any mousse. Just a little bit first, because you want to mix and move any lumps first. I'm doing this over ice because at the same time, it's cooling it and the cream is whipping into the mix and making it lighter. So it's up to them, you know, if you want to fold some mushrooms through it. Mm. Um, I've tasted these mushrooms and I believe they do need a pinch of salt. They've been cooked, so I'm just adding those in. All you would then do is just fill the cavity with your mousse. So you're now recreating the natural shape of, of the trotter. Absolutely. You want to, you know, and look how much you're going to have to eat. I mean, that's a lot. I, I, I think I'd struggle to finish that. I wouldn't. You wouldn't? I'd eat it. And to make sure that it's completely pressed up, you've got the form, and you want to hold this shape. Okay, so you want to trim it there. There we have it, guys. Our pig's trotter completely bowed out and stuffed with a chicken mousse. This is a serious, serious challenge. It's going to be interesting to watch these three chefs get through this one. First up is 38-year-old Gavin, who has been a head chef for 13 years. I operate the business for the owners, costing menus, coming up with new ideas, creating new dishes. It's hard work. I have three young children. So a very demanding family life. I do a school run before coming to work every day. Working in a professional kitchen doesn't come without constraints. We have to operate to please the customers, so that relates in the style of food that we do. Going on a competition like this gives me an opportunity to showcase what I'm about and what I'm able to achieve. Gavin? I would like you to bone out the pig's trotter, keeping the skin as whole as possible. Sure. And then uh, stuff it with the chicken mousse and any of the other ingredients you have here. OK, no worries. Does that sound straightforward enough? Yes, it does. You've boned a trotter before? Uh, a long time ago, maybe 15 years ago, so yeah. The trotter hasn't changed, no. so it's still, it's still the same. <laughs> yes. Same as it was 15 years ago, <laughs> Gavin. It's been a long time. <laughs> Gavin, you have 15 minutes. OK. Off you go. Probably doing it completely wrong. <laughs> what are you doing it, Chef? Well, it's trying to get it off with the skin intact, isn't it? So.
halfway, you've got seven and a half minutes left. Mm -hmm. Yep. What's up? No, I'm just lost on the, the toes. There we go. All right, all right. I was a bit concerned, but going backwards on myself. Health and safety, chopping my fingers off. No, no, keep your fingers. Lose, yeah. lose, lose <laughs> That's the... That's what's worrying me. <laughs> Now you got it off, you've still got five minutes to stuff it. I should have done this first, actually. You're going to have to be a bit lively, you've got three minutes. Yeah. Glad no one's eating it. Rum and raisin ice cream you got in there. My favourite. I'll have to roll up so I'm out of time. There you go. Can you unroll it for us so we can see how it looks? Yeah, of course. Right, I'll just split it down the back, haven't I? You know, you identify all the problems after you've done them, didn't you? What you have done, uh, in fact, is you have removed the trotter, but you have left a lot of the meat on here. Um, and when you channel bone it like that, at certain points, the knife is going to go through the skin. If this was to be cooked, that fast would leach out everywhere, okay, it wouldn't hold together. You've torched it afterwards, again, torch it before you, you take <coughs> it off the bone. You started off okay, you started the tunneling, but as you get further down the line, it, it, your knife, as Monica said, is going to go through, and that's very evident to see. And you struggled. You give me confidence, but I don't want you to make a fool of me now. I want you to prove it in the next round. Thank you. Thank you. You drum into your guys at work all the time about the classics, and then you get presented with it. It's something you haven't done for a very long period of time, and it comes back to get you. Next is sous chef John who works in a fine dining restaurant in Wiltshire. Where I see myself in the next so one to two years is taking on my first head chef's role. And then the overall goal is to set up um, my own place, eventually pushing for a mission star. I want to prove to myself that I can compete with the top professional chefs in the country. I believe in myself and what I do, and I, and I believe that I can. It's all about what I produce on the day. John, what I would like you to do today is to bone out the trotter here and then stuff it with a chicken fast using the, the mushrooms or the black pudding if, if you feel like it. All right? I've never prepped one before, so it could be interesting. Don't be intimidated. It's only a trotter. <laughs> and all you. you've got to do is bone it. You have 15 minutes. John, yeah. you've had five minutes. OK, thank you. What's the, what's the struggle now, John? What's the issue? I can feel the bone now where, where it um, comes off. I just can't quite get that. Don't stab yourself in there. No, I won't. Sorry. Five minutes left. Whoa! Almost there, aren't you? You're almost yeah. there. <clears throat> you get a bit frustrated with that last bit. Yeah.
Ten seconds. I think that's it, isn't it? I think we're done. We've done as much as we're going to do. John? Yeah, sorry. Don't apologise. I just couldn't quite get to that joint bit there. So. That was tiring watching you do that. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> what I do like is the fact that you didn't damage it. You know, you've kept it on as, as much as possible. Um, but I, I reckon I could come back tomorrow morning and you'd still be here. I think you have a point to prove to the judges because I don't think we saw very much of you there. Oh, he really wasn't getting anywhere, though. No, he wasn't you getting You needed anywhere. to step back a bit and, you know, rethink it. In my head, I kind of knew how to do it, but I just didn't use my common sense, and I, I let the moment get the better of me, so... Last up is 31-year-old Scott, who is a head chef of a hotel restaurant. I decided to be, be a chef because I always liked to be creative. Uh, I liked working with my hands. Um, I never felt like I could work on a computer all day. And uh, I felt like catering was maybe the, that was my outlet. All my catering training was on the job and through just buying books and reading as much as, and eating out as well when I can. I'm looking forward to playing my part in the competition and hopefully I can play it well. What'd you make of that beastie? Pig straw. I've done a few. I've taken the skin off, stuffed them once or twice, so fingers crossed. You will have 15 minutes. Yep. Okay? Sure. So focus on the task, it goes by very quickly. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Sure. Have you ever put trotter on the menu? It's never, been, it's never been something that's been on my menu in the past. I've never eaten it yet. <laughs> so what's happening now? Instinct? Instinct and a bit of what I can remember from last time I did it. How long ago was that, Scott? Probably seven or eight years ago. It's going all right so far, though. Thank you, Chef. You're just halfway, so you've got seven and a half minutes left yeah. to stuff this. Right? <laughs> Thanks. What's that, what, 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 why the indecision? What's happening? Well, black pudding, chicken, and pig go well together. I'm not sure. I need to add the mushrooms to it. Um, Don't add sure. them then. Yeah. <laughs> And you're looking at the Marcus to see if he's going to give you an indication of what he'd like, aren't you? <laughs> I don't think he's going to give me any indication. Finished? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. Well done. Completed that with two and a half minutes to spare. Thanks very much. Cheers. Scott, you've left a lot of the, the foot on, yeah. on, the, on the bone at the end here. Yeah. However, you kept your cool and concentrated on the, the task here, okay? Mm. You didn't cause too much damage to the trotter and just took your time uh, chipping away at it. Yeah. I think, what a great attempt. Thanks very much. Just one other thing. I've never seen a, a pig trotter that's been wrapped down. Oh. Like a piping <laughs> bag and then stuffed. <laughs> That's the yeah. first. I've never seen that before. That's a new technique. That was a very, very good skills test. Thank you. Well done, Scott. Thank very, you. very good start to the MasterChef competition. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like I've got a bit of pressure off my shoulders. Um, still a lot to go. Uh, I know I'm not out of the woods yet, so just want to stay focused and carry on. This is just the start. Two fantastic challenges, uh, and we really do get a taste of what these chefs are about. Scott from your skills test and Joey, they look like the leaders at the moment. They are. Yeah, they Let's are. hope they keep that momentum going.
No matter what happened in that skills test, that is only half the story. The rest is going to unfold here, right now, with your own dish. We have three quarterfinal places to offer. It's your signature dish. You've chosen it. I hope it's your best one. At the end of this, three of you will be going home. Focus on your cooking today. I wish you luck. One hour and 15 minutes, off you go. For my signature dish, I'm doing some pan-fried sea trout with uh, crispy skin and almond puree, asparagus spears, some uh, raw pickled fennel and raw radish. It might not be the most technical, in fact, I'm sure it won't be the most technical, but um, hopefully it will be tasty. Simplicity is one of the hardest things to achieve. To get it right, she needs to maximise all those fantastic ingredients and bring the best flavour out of them. What's this thing about a fish on a nut puree? Yeah. What, what, why? I like cooking things that are quite light, so replacing what might have been a, a potato or a starch puree um, with a protein puree, I think it's quite interesting. For me, for me it works, so hopefully. Works for me. Okay. Works for me too. <laughs> Almond puree. Yeah. yeah. As long as you got it right, you've got a bit of a caramelisation through it, why yeah. not? Thank you very much. 15 minutes gone already, guys. 15 minutes gone. I, I think after the first round, I feel myself more competitive now. I'm ready, hungry for it. Scott, what's your signature dish? Quail breast sous vide. Uh, I'm going to make a scotch egg with the, the rest of the meat and some of the offal that's inside as well. Uh, I'm going to do a roast celery puree, some chanterelles a la grec, and some just as they come. I think it shows my understanding of flavour and technique, and hopefully that's what you're looking for in the competition. For me, the key here is the cooking of the quail. You don't want to overcook it. There's not a lot of meat on there, and there's certainly not a lot of fat. The scotch egg has to be beautifully cooked. The egg in the centre has to be beautiful and runny. It's got to be beautiful and round. It's got to be panned correctly. Sounds easy, but actually it's quite a difficult thing to do. Gavin is cooking rack of lamb. He's serving it with Pom Maxine, broad beans and some artichokes. Fantastic flavours. These are great combinations. They work. Pom Maxims, they've got to be made properly. Thinly sliced potatoes, they're crispy. You can cut them in circles, line them up. They can actually look quite stunning if done properly. Gavin, why are you here? When you're a head chef, you kind of become pigeonholed in what you're doing. It gives me another dimension, gives me another sort of strings my bow, something to challenge myself, as opposed to challenging myself in a restaurant, it's challenging myself on a, you know, personal level. Greg, you know, he's obviously expressed that he, he likes what he sees in me, but it's getting Monica and Marcus on board now by just giving them good food. It's what they want, it's what we do as industry professionals. And so long as I do that, I think I've got a good chance. You guys are halfway, OK? Yep. Good, good, good. The judges probably aren't thinking of me much, of much as, of a chef, to be honest. I plan on proving them wrong by giving them a dish that they're going to remember about, they're going to, and it's just going to completely outwipe the skills test. I see you're making a dessert for us. So yeah. are you strong in, in pastry? Um, I, I do a bit of everything. Um, me eating dishes, I like to have something sweet, so I thought, why not? I'm making a caramelised white chocolate mousse, and I'm serving it with white chocolate truffles. How do you caramelise a mousse? Uh, you have to basically have it at a controlled temperature, so it can't go too hot, but then if it's not hot enough, then it just won't caramelise, and then you have to watch it like a hawk. You have to be on top of it. If this goes wrong, if you don't get your time right, we're going to have a caramelised puddle. Yeah. 
it's really hot in here. Chocolate work is normally made in pastry sections where it's chilled and cool, where you can control the temperature. The problem Sean's going to have is that the room is going to control the temperature. After the skills test, I feel like, well, I have to think that I'm on the bottom of the pile. And I know that I need to knock it out of the park with my signature to rise up the ranks again. Joe, you look disappointed after the skills test. What do you want to do now? I want to uh, get back on track and show you that I can cook good food and hopefully this plate's going to do that. What is this plate, Joe? What are you going to make for us? So I've got a uh, pork fillet. It's going to be served with some maple glazed carrots, a butternut squash puree, uh, asparagus, radish, and a white wine and tarragon sauce. Well, you've got a lot going on here. Yeah. I, I wanted to show that I can put a plate together that has good textures, good flavour, and just come off. It's been a really nice dish. Oh, yes, I love these combinations. White wine, tarragon and pork is a beautiful marriage. The question is always going to be, until we see the dishes, is he going to be able to bring all these flavours together? There's quite a lot going on there. But that doesn't make it wrong. If it's in good hands, it can work. Ten minutes left. What is your signature dish? Hake loin, poached, and a bit of pan shattered butter. Pea puree, mm. saute of broad beans, peas, jam lettuce, pan shatter, a pan shatter and caper croquettes, and pickled shallot rings, uh, and a pan shatter foam, sorry. And a pan shatter foam? Yeah, just to bring it all together. I hope you've still got some energy left, John. Oh, After yeah. that workout with that trotter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm never gonna live that down, am I? No, you're not. <laughs> As always, the concern for me, and I'm sure for you, Monica, is the foam. Foam, foam, foam is something that our chefs bring to the kitchen on a regular basis. Unfortunately, they're always hit or miss. I want John's foam to taste of pancetta. I want it to have some body to it. I want it to sit there and be proud. Judges haven't seen anything of me yet, so now this is my opportunity to show them what I can do and, and impress them. Unless I uh, produce a good signature dish, I'm going home. Four minutes, right, and we mean it. Don't get caught short. Get it on a plate. That's it. Time's up. Stop. Moose collapsed. Oh, no. Sean, would you bring your plate up, please? To stay in the competition, 21-year-old head chef Sean has made caramelised white chocolate mousse topped with a pistachio crisp, served with coconut rum truffles, freeze-dried raspberries and a raspberry salsa. It clearly has melted. Yeah. I love the flavours of this, and I think it's a crying shame. I mean, I'm a big Pud fan. It's a crying shame because the, the texture there is, is non-existent. However, the, the flavours of your bonbons are just magical. You only just get the caramelisation at the end of the, the, the white chocolate, so it's, it's not very strong. The salsa you have on the side is really sharp, really sharp. It's not worked out well for you today. Mm. The recipe had huge potential, but the execution wasn't very good. Uh, at my kitchen at work, I could, I could do that dish easy. I have it on the menu at the minute, but it just went so wrong. Private chef Joe has made pork fillet coated in sep powder and served with a garlic croquette, maple syrup glazed carrots, butternut squash puree, asparagus, radish, pickled fennel and a white wine and tarragon sauce. 
there's a lot of elements on, on your dish here, but this, you can see that it's all been placed with thought. It looks great. Joe, the first thing that always concerns me personally as a judge is when a chef reels off 12, 13, 14, 15 different elements to a plate of food. Um, because sometimes it, it, it throws up the question of when is enough enough. Um, surprisingly, I think this dish works very, very well. The pork is just a little bit underdone, but I can accept that. The vegetables are all beautifully cooked. They've been executed well, whether it be a pickle or whether it be braised or whether it be pan fried or blanched. Love the croquette. Fantastic job, Joe. Well done. You've surprised me. The sauce is wonderful and it does bring the whole dish together. Um, the slight pickling throughout as well is a bit of a freshness on, on the plate here. I love the raw elements on this and the croquette, wonderful and crispy and cooked properly on the inside. You've pleased mm. the two chefs beside me. They like it, I like it. Well done, Joe. You had some ground to make up and uh, mm. you've done pretty good, huh? Thanks. Yeah, I feel brilliant like that. that those comments were just on top of the world, you know. Can't believe it. Ugh. Yes. John, would you come and join us, please? Sue's chef John's poached hake is served with pancetta and caper croquettes. Peas, broad beans, gem lettuce, pancetta, pickled and crispy shallot rings, pea puree, pea shoots, and a pancetta foam. It's a nicely presented plate of food. The only thing that, that stands out is that the foam lasts for seconds uh, and, and it disappears, which creates the puddle, which is, is, which is what the customer sees. Okay. The fish, I expected more of that uh pancetta butter through this this fish because I know you put the butter over it and you poached it in it as well uh, a bit more seasoning in, in the fish for me as well um, it's it's a it's a nice dish yeah. but I'm not blown away by it okay the the foam there's not really anything to taste it's sort of been let down a little bit by the puree on the plate so we're sort of missing these sort of key things that I was looking forward to I really really like it I, I, I honestly do natural sweetness of pea broad bean, the crunch of the, the pea shoots. I love the idea of the capers inside your croquette. What is missing for me is pancetta smokiness. Lacked a little bit of the pancetta flavour I wanted to get through, but it definitely went better than the pig trotter. Head chef Gavin has made a rack of lamb, which is accompanied by broad beans, baby artichokes, roasted shallots, pom maxime, and a lamb sauce. I love the lamb on a cutlet like this because I, I'm the kind of chef that will just pick up the bone and eat it like that. But I can't do this with this because of the amount of fat that hasn't rendered down. Monica, you're right. Just wish you'd have taken the chunk of fat off, cook that separately and then put that back on the dish and you would have absolutely nailed that lamb. The lamb's still lovely and pink in the middle. The, the broad beans, lovely, they've been cooked perfectly and the, the pom maxime is still crispy. I'm perfectly satisfied with the dish without being in love with it. Good up to a point, but it isn't good enough for you to be licking the plate clean. Generally, I was happy. They, I mean, they didn't completely wipe the dish off, which was good. Joey's sea trout has been served with its crispy skin, together with an almond puree, asparagus, pickled fennel, shaved radish, and watercress. Joey, that's a very pretty looking plate of food. Yeah, I like it a lot. It was great. Thank you. As much as I like the nut and the fennel combo together, I think it's a little too powerful mm -hmm. for that very delicate fish. The asparagus is cooked wonderfully. I love the crispy skin that you've got on here. It puffs up nicely and brings a, a texture to the dish. 
but I don't like the texture of the puree. I know how hard it is to get dry nut puree to be smooth and I actually sort of quite like that texture. As I was eating it, I was just thinking of holidays. Nice glass of wine on a veranda somewhere and I think that's pretty much where you've been working. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I can, I can absolutely 100% see that on that plate and I think that's your dish to a tea. I like the dish a lot. Thank you. Well, next. Good comments. Finally, it's Scott, whose quarterfinal place rests on his quail breasts, served with quail scotch egg, chanterelle, radish, celeriac puree, and a hazelnut sauce. I'm going to start with the scotch egg. Clearly, it was <coughs> undercooked, uh, but it's just screaming up for some love as well. You know, I need some salt and some pepper through that uh, scotch egg. The, the quail is wonderfully cooked, nice and pink, the skin nice and, and golden. But again, for me, it needs a bit more love on there. That celeriac is so powerful and there's so much of it that it's pretty much taking over the flavour of the whole dish. The scotch egg is a bit of a disaster. Um, I think we've, 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 we've pretty much covered that one. And the sauce, it doesn't taste of hazelnut at all. If you're going to put a nut flavour into something, then you've got to make sure it's in there. Overall, the dish has huge potential with the ingredients. I just don't think it's worked today for you. Mm. All the feedback from the judges is justified. There was other errors that aren't acceptable in a competition of this standard. What is obvious to me is that we've got six very good chefs in front of us. What's also obvious is that we had some serious ups and downs throughout the two tests. We can only take three of you through. Go and take a rest, we'll get you back in when we made our decision. This is not going to be easy. Off you go. It's been a good day in, in the fact that we have a tough judging now and this is what we want. Which dish or dishes do you think were, were outstanding here in the, in the signature round? I think Joe's for me was the dish that stood out mm. more than any other. Joe ticked all the boxes for me today. Joey for me was the outstanding contestant in the skills test. Almost step by step identical to what I did. I admired the way she worked here today. I didn't like the puree, but that comes down to personal taste. I don't think it's enough of a reason to, to, to leave this good chef out. So, before we talk ourselves out of it, do we have two chefs here that are going to go through? Hey, we do, chef. Oh. We do. However, there is one chef that has stood out for, for the wrong reasons. Sean really did mess up. You know, if he had a strong skills test, you know, he'd have an option here. But that dessert he made was not good at all. Sean's competition is over and I think Sean knows that as well. Yeah, I think you're right. We've got Scott who did the best skills test with the pig strotter. However, he had a really, really disappointing quail dish. I, I think there's enough points there to send Scott home. Right. But in this kitchen today, that's such a shame. Yeah, I agree. He's in a tough, tough, tough arena. He is. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Now we've got one place left to give and that is a decision between John and Gavin. Gavin, not a brilliant skills test but, 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 but not bad. Uh, with his signature dish, real, real plus points. I don't think I've done enough to go through because there's some other good dishes in there. Trouble is, it's, it's a fine line. John, who made the hake dish mm. with the pancetta, we all said that we would eat that dish, but it was just very underwhelming. But then we also have to look at his skill set and how he struggled to bone out a trotter. Yes, uh, that was we, him. And was fighting for, for eight minutes with the knuckles. Hopefully they can see some potential in me and see that I've got what it takes going forward. So, but who knows? I think this comes down to very, very tight margins. You've trained enough chefs in your time. What do your hearts say?
that was tough and you guys really did push yourselves to the limit. It is a real shame three of you have to leave this competition today, a real shame. But we can only take three of you through. The first chef leaving the competition is... Sean. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Cheers, thank you. Our second chef leaving the competition is... Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much. And our third chef leaving the competition is... John. Thank you, John. John, thank you, well done. I'm a bit disappointed. It's probably the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. I'm glad I applied to come and have this experience. I just wish it went a bit better. I'll take away what I can from it and keep pushing forward. Yeah, I thought I was kind of done at the end of that, but I must have done something right to please the judges. It's awesome, and I'm looking forward to it continuing. Master Chef Court finalist. I can live with that. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was dead in the water. Wow. Next time, it's the quarter final. And the chefs must prove themselves to Marcus and Monica. Burnt 12 is a burnt 12. All right, chef. That could sit in any three star Muslim restaurant. Only the best of them will get to cook for the critics. And it's just perfect.